What's up my comic comrades? One of the best and most fun aspects of storytelling is a great plot twist. And over the years, comics has given us quite a few of them. So we thought it'd be fun to recount some of the most notorious, some of our personal favorites, and some of the most shocking plot twists in comic history. So let's start with the bang, shall we? Kicking this off is an iconic and fan love twist, and that is the plot twist at the end of Watchmen. In the final issue of the Watchmen series, it is revealed that Ozymandias is the mastermind or architect behind the apocalypse that is threatening the world. You see, we learned that Ozymandias orchestrated and faked an alien invasion in New York City to save humanity from impending nuclear war. He's doing this in the hopes that the world will put their differences aside with one another to fight a common threat. You see, while a massive squid-like creature was attacking New York, it wasn't an alien. It was actually created by Ozymandias in his laboratories to again trick the world into thinking they were being invaded by aliens to come together, putting aside their differences, stopping a world war. And it turned out his plan worked as we see through the news that the world is indeed coming together. But since this was all orchestrated, Rorschach isn't for it, and he leaves intent on telling the world they've been tricked. But Dr. Manhattan confronts Rorschach saying, I can't allow you to do that, man. At this point, the truth will only hurt. Warshak then says, you're gonna have to kill me if you don't want me to tell the truth. And Dr. Manhattan obliges. Simply put, there's no denying that the ending of Watchmen is one of the greatest twists in all of comics. There's a reason why it's one of the most iconic graphic novels. After this, we have one of my personal all-time favorite plot twists slash reveals in a comic book, and that is the revelation or twist that the brutal vigilante Red Hood is actually a resurrected Jason Todd. And all this goes down in Batman issue 641. In the issue, Batman and Red Hood are having an epic fight, and Red Hood is able to knock the cowl off Bruce's face. Red Hood then says, I guess we should keep it even as he takes off his helmet and throws it to the floor. Bruce then says, oh God. Then on the next page, we see it's Jason Todd who says, no, want to guess again? Of course, at first, Bruce doesn't believe this is actually Jason Todd, but some kind of clone or trick. At which point, Jason picks up a batarang, cuts the back of his head and says, here, that's fingerprints and here's some blood, even tissue while throwing the batarang at Bruce saying, check it all you'll find that it's me. Of course, Bruce would learn this is in fact Jason, who was brought back to life via the Lazarus Pit, but nonetheless, this is one of the greatest plot twists in comics because one, Jason Todd was voted to die by the hands of the Joker years before, and two, no one expected him to come back, especially this way, and with the amazing tension they built between the two, brilliant. It's one of my favorite comic book stories and twists ever. Another great twist was given to us at the beginning of the Injustice series with Superman killing Lois Lane, thinking she was Doomsday. This is a fantastic I would say even iconic twist. I mean, it's literally the crux for the story and plot of the Injustice universe going forward. And there's no denying it. The Injustice universe is one of the greatest things DC has ever given us. The amount of shocking reveals and plot twists are insane, but of course, we had to choose the one that kicked off the whole universe. Basically what goes down is Joker tricks Superman with one of his toxins or gases into thinking Lois Lane is doomsday. So under this delusion, he flies her into space, but by the time Batman warns Superman to snap out of it, it's too late. Soup's inadvertently kill killed his wife. But get this, Joker reveals to Batman two panels before that Lois is pregnant, as Superman hears the two heartbeats from Lois stop beating. That's right, Superman and us the readers thought he was killing Doomsday, but in fact, he was killing his wife and unborn child. Not only that, Joker kidnapped and operated on Lois previously and planted something into her heart. So when she died and her heart stopped beating, it would activate a warhead to go off in Metropolis. If you ask me, I would put this in the top five most shocking moments in comics. Next up, we have the twist of Black Noir being a clone of Homelander in the boys comic series, issue 65 to be exact. Now, I know what most of you are thinking in the show, he's not a clone of Homelander. That is correct. But in the comic, he is, which is why many of us were thinking that Black Noir in the show would eventually be revealed to be a clone of Homelander, but season three hard to bunk that, giving us the show's backstory of Noir. Either way, the twist of Black Noir being the secret clone of Homelander was huge. The series was 65 issues in, and Black Noir finally revealed his identity to Homelander and Butch in the Oval Office, where we learned that Black Noir was a Homelander clone created by Vought with some refined Compound V. They created him to be a contingency plan, so to speak, to have a way to stop Homelander if he ever went AWOL on Vault. By the time this was all said and done, the plot twist was pretty epic. Next up, we have the massive reveal of Zorn being Magneto in New X-Men issue 146. Zorn was first introduced to us in New X-Men Annual 2001. He was a powerful mutant who the X-Men saved. He would then join the X-Men and even become a teacher at Xavier School. But it's later revealed in New X-Men 146 that Zorn is in fact Magneto. What makes this even crazier is that Magneto was thought to be dead during this time. We learned that Magneto did all this to take the X-Men and Charles out from the inside, leveling the X-Mansion and taking over New York. Now this would later get retconned where Zorn was only pretending to be Magneto, but nonetheless, its initial shock was crazy. Another great twist is the reveal that Gilda Dent was the initial or true holiday killer in Batman The Long Halloween. And Alberto Falcone was just a copycat who wanted to be part of the prestige the holiday killer was getting. The crazy thing though, is that like all great whodunit mystery stories, such as Glass Onion, watch it if you haven't already, the clues were all there from the beginning. For instance, in issue three of Batman The Long Halloween, Batman and Jim Gordon visit Calendar Man in Arkham. They think he can help find the holiday killer, given that the Calendar Man's whole gimmick is committing crimes that coincide with the calendar. Calendar Man 
Batman just tells Batman and Jim, tomorrow is the big day. She'll be killing again. Batman asks, what makes you think it's a woman? Calendar Man replies, because he likes it. The attention. No one knows who she is, and already he has made a name for himself or herself. So even though it seemed like misdirect for Batman, Gordon, and us the reader, Calendar Man was actually telling us it's two different people by referring to the holiday killer as a he and her, with it turning out to be just that. Gilda Dent and then Alberto Falcone. Then of course we have the secret invasion storyline. That whole damn story was full of plot twists and reveals, as the whole point of this series is that scrolls have secretly invaded Earth and we didn't know what characters were scrolls or not. I mean, we're talking about such characters like Elektra, Black Bolt, Spider Woman, Hank Pym, and more, who were revealed to be scrolls. So in general, the whole story is a plot twist, so it's going to be very interesting to see if the MCU does that as well. Then we have one of the most infamous plot twists of all time, and that is the death of Gwen Stacy. You gotta remember, at this point in time, this was crazy to kill off a character this way. It was brutal as well. As we all know, the Green Goblin threw Gwen Stacy off the Brooklyn Bridge, and she died with the sudden stop of Spider-Man trying to save her with his web line, causing her neck to snap. Crazy. And no one was expecting this at the time. Hell, Stan Lee wasn't expecting this. He was actually annoyed they killed her off. As the story goes, he was on vacation, and when he came back, he found out that Jerry Conway, the writer of the story, killed her off and wasn't happy. This was such a shocking and impactful twist that it literally kicked off the Bronze Age of comics, a darker, grittier era for comic books. Then after this, we have, of course, the epic reveal in JLA Tower of Babel that Batman had secretly made a contingency plan for every member of the Justice League in case they ever needed to be stopped. Stopped. This was a huge revelation for both us, the readers, and the Justice League, as it not only demonstrated how paranoid Batman is, that he even has to be prepared for his friends to go rogue, but also that Batman really can defeat or take down anyone if he has time to plan. This is actually a moment and reveal that is still used to this very day. Most recently, in Chip Zdarsky's failsafe storyline, issue 127 of Batman. In the issue, we get a flashback that expands the scene from Tower of Babel, where Bruce is confronted by Clark in the Batcave for going behind the League's back, creating ways to defeat the entire League. Without their knowledge, mind you. It was an incredible revelation and twist. Again, one that is still constantly talked about to this day. We also have the massive twist and reveal for Swamp Thing from Alan Moore's Saga of the Swamp Thing. You see, originally everyone thought that Alex Holland had turned into Swamp Thing after his lab explosion in the swamp. But this book revealed that Swamp Thing was in fact never Alec Holland, but rather a plant that thought it was Alec Holland. That's right, it was just a plant that essentially absorbed the real Alec Holland's consciousness, in turn thinking it was in fact the true Alec Holland. This is one of the biggest twists in comics ever, and it's still pretty crazy that Swamp Thing is just a creature, it just so happens to possess Alec Holland's memories. And lastly, let's end with a twist that initially pissed off every comic book fan and their mother. And that would be the twist at the end of Captain America Steve Rogers issue one, where good old Captain America was revealed to be a sleeper Hydra agent this whole time uttering the words, Hail Hydra. And not only was he part of Hydra, we find out he's the leader of Hydra, Hydra Supreme. The crazy part, like I just briefly mentioned, is that it's not like Captain America decided to become a Hydra agent out of nowhere. No, he was apparently a sleeper agent this whole time, waiting for the right time to unveil himself. Basically how this all played out as we find out, the shield made a cosmic cube that became sentient. Once this happened, Red Skull was able to take control of the sentient cosmic cube, which was now in the form of a little girl called Kobik. He was able to convince Kobik and or the cosmic cube that Hydra ideology was the right way. This led to Red Skull being able to have Kobik alter reality, changing Steve Rogers' past, making him a sleeper agent for Hydra. With reality now rewritten, Steve Rogers along with Hydra would begin their plan to take over the United States and the world. Long story short, Kobik became afraid of the world with Hydra now ruling it, so she created the Vanishing Point, a place where the memories of heroes go. She then turns a heroic memory of Captain America into a physical form, giving us back our star-spangled hero once again, at which point he defeats Hydra Cap. Nonetheless, this was a fantastic twist that had comic and non-comic fans up in arms. But there you have it, some of the best twists in all of comic books. There are so many great plot twists in comics, so we need several episodes to get to them all. I mean, you still have Barbara Gorda getting shot in The Killing Joke, Sharon Carter killing Captain America, The Truth About Hush, and the list goes on. But now we'll turn it over to you. What are your favorite plot twists in comic history? Let us know down in the comments. And that's going to bring today's episode to a close, but if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment, it helps the channel out. But other than that, I will see you next time when I talk about all things comics.